The main suspect in the disappearance of U.S. teenager Natalie Holloway while she was abroad has been arraigned in an Alabama court. You're on Bounder Sloat. A Dutch national pleaded not guilty of trying to extort the Holloway family for money in exchange for information related to her 2005 disappearance. He was extradited to the U.S. from Peru, where he's been serving a 28-year prison sentence for the murder of a different woman. Our Janet Shamlian has been following this story for us and is outside the courthouse in Birmingham, Alabama. Janet, you just came out of the courtroom. What was it like in the arraignment? Yeah, let me give you a flavor for it. It actually ended about an hour ago now. It started at 11 o'clock Eastern. It lasted just about five minutes, but before it even started, there was a crowd of about 100 people in there. Many of them appeared to be friends of Beth Holloway's, Natalie's mother, and about a dozen of them, I was told, were people who went on the Aruba trip with mm. Natalie Holloway. Uh, they would now, like her, be about 36 years old. Um, Beth Holloway came in just before court started. She was with a number of family members. Uh, she was stoic. She sat down. Um, and awaited for this to start. And then before the judge came in, Jorn Vandersloot um, was brought in, and he was wearing a white T-shirt and jeans, and um, he uh, sat down, at, and a, a court clerk started addressing him and said, um, you know, we've got this translator for you who can talk to you, and put, gave him an earpiece, which Jorn put into his ear. Um, and he said, look, I, re I speak perfect English. I really don't need this. The court clerk said to him, let's wait till the judge comes in so we can get this on the record. A few minutes later, the judge came in and, um, sorry, I've got some background noise here. Um, the judge came in and, and said, you know, you don't want this. He said, I don't need it. After that, it went very quickly. Um, the judge said, I'm only allowing you to plead not guilty. Um, and at that point, his public defender entered a plea of not guilty for him. No further court date was set, so we're not really sure what will happen, but certainly there's going to be a period of discovery and investigation by both sides on this. And uh, within a few minutes, Joran was let out in the handcuffs that he came in with, and it was over. Um, Beth Holloway made no comment. She left out the back. Dave Holloway, whose attorney I spoke to yesterday, uh, gave a brief statement saying that he was hopeful that this would provide some accountability for the family. Um, I was surprised how many family members seemed to be in the courtroom, friends of the family. And again, it looked like uh, about a dozen people who may have been on that trip with Natalie Holloway when she disappeared in 2005. Janet, can you tell us more about the emotion, given that, that uh, Beth Holloway was in the room, that there were so many family members, other people who were on that trip. Uh, and and in, in telling us about the emotion in the room, remind us about the charges that Van der Sloot is facing right now, because it's not for Holloway's murder, it's actually for what he did afterwards. Yeah, so five years after Natalie disappeared, it was 2010, um, Joran Van der Sloot uh, asked for $250,000 um, uh, from Beth Holloway and said that in exchange for that, he would tell her where Natalie's body was and explain what happened to her. He accepted an initial payment of $25,000. That was part of an FBI sting. Once that happened, um, they had him um, on, on wire fraud or, or, you know, they had reason to charge him with wire fraud and extortion. Um, he later said that the information was false. Of course, by this time, he was already convicted for the 2010 murder of a 21-year-old Peruvian businesswoman. So um, the reason that he is not here in Birmingham until now is because um, although the U.S. and Peru have an extradition treaty, it wasn't until last month that a Peruvian judge allowed um, Joran to be extradited here to Birmingham. All right. Janet, uh, thanks for sticking with us despite all those audio problems. Uh, really know that a lot of people are very invested in this case. Appreciate you.